If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Looking for PTGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tailman code when checking out for 5% off. Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for Pokemon cards. Whether you're looking for sealed product or singles, vintage or the latest sets, just follow the link in the description to find what you need. Want to show off your love for Tableman? Check out my 2021 merch. These new hoodies and shirts are available on Amazon. Click on the link in the description to get yours. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website, PokemonCard.io. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here at Tailbun. Thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to be playing with another variant of Arceus V-Star, which contains Ice Rider Calyrex V-Max. So Arceus V-Star does provide um, a lot of solid options for Ice Rider. Seeing at 280 HP, only worth two prizes, and the train to Nova attack doing 200 damage and you search your deck, rock three basic energy cards, and attach them to your Pokemon V in any way you like. And we also have the Starburst ability as our V Star power so that we can search our deck, rock to two cards, and put them into our hand. Now, this does conflict a little bit with our Path to a Peak, but we're playing Path to a Peak to help us in slowing down Mew V Max for the most part. And we have Ice Rider Calyrex V Max as a hard hitting Pokemon hitting for. Um, with Ride of the High King, 10 damage plus 3 more damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, and Max Lance doing 10 damage, and you may discard up to 2 energy from this Pokemon, and if you do this attack, there's 120 more damage for each card you discard in this way, maxing out at 250 damage. With the brand new Choice Belt, we now deal 280 damage, which is enough to one kill other Arceus V-Stars, and with the tech Leon doing 30 bonus damage, we actually get to 310, which is enough to 1KO a UV Max, which seems to be enemy number one, right? Continues to be in this Brilliant Stars meta. So until in line, that helps out um, support the deck, find what we need when we need it. If you don't like me playing <laughs> until in which I can't believe I have to say this, um, but I am playing towards competitive. This is competitive focus. This is focused on trying to win tournaments. If you don't like using Intillion, you probably don't like winning tournaments, and therefore, um, this is not the right, I guess, content for you. But now we're back to, I even brought back the Road to Worlds um, logo. We are back in full on competitive mode. So Intillion is obviously a fantastic, fantastic card. Now we have Melanie on right hand to help power up. We have boss orders to target down, Marnie and Research to help draw, and then a lot of um, Pokemon Surge. I'm not very convinced so far of Ultra Wall, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I feel like Ultra Wall doesn't give you... Like, the, this card is very harsh for these sort of decks, um, the two-card discard, so I'm not super sold on it being better than um, having the extra level ball and the extra instance at the moment, and we're already running pretty low on those, so... I don't know, it's like it's a nice middle ground because this can search for basic and evolutions as opposed to these, but the discard can be pretty harsh. So that's something that um, I'm still trying to find the right balance for. But this is the deck that we're gonna be playing. Three uh, du double turbo energy along with six waters and let's jump into the game. Alrighty, so game number one, speaking of Ultra Ball, <laughs> I mean, it's here, right? We are going second, which is um, a little sad for sure, but it is what it is. We're up against Mew V Max, so there's a very big chance that my Calyrex V just goes down in the next turn, and that's very sad. And this is always very frustrating <laughs> looking at my hand, which is not very good, not even a supporter, and though I'm going second, and my opponent just starts to double raw battle VIP pass, you know, so. What are you gonna do? They immediately go for the Oricorio, which is very surprising to me, um, as opposed to a third Genesect. So it must be very aware that I could potentially one-shot them with Ice Rider, Leon, and the Choice Belts, but definitely interesting. It's not something that happens um, very commonly, I would say, for players to just outright go for their Gorio in this particular matchup, right? So there's the attachment. Uh, my opponent still has a Genesect ability left, I thought. Did they only use one Genesect? Uh, Fusion Strike System. So why wouldn't they use the other Genesect's ability? 
That is very odd. Uh, so realistically, my hand is not only not very good, but this Calyrex is just probably going to go down. So I think I want to just search for an Arceus next turn. So here's what I'm thinking. I get rid of these two cards and I just get an Arceus and bench it. And hope it survives, right? I mean, I could go for another one and then I have guaranteed survival of the Arceus. Maybe that's worth it. Um, okay, so we know my opponent has energy. They would need energy plus switch to really punish this, but I mean, it's not unreasonable by any means. If that does happen, the, the thing is they can also escape rope, right? So yeah, I guess I'll go for it. Not super happy about this. Um, probably will try to avoid benching um, Sobble. Well, I can bench a Sobble. Uh, we'll probably end up not being able to bench another Ice Rider though. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, but definitely a scary situation with a crap hand um, that we got. Oh, the, these sort of decks, the Melanie decks, they do struggle a little bit. Um, in the beginning of the game because you can't like you don't have four research and four money that you can rely on but it is what it is i'm still very perplexed as to why my opponent chose not to use the second genesect ability for a um for an extra card i am actually still perplexed at that decision but yeah there's a switch there's a mu max with incense so not even updated for ultra walls right here Two switches down, so maybe that's something I can play with um, off of boss's orders. See the less a sparkle, so yeah, just having everything. <laughs> and now they're one energy away too. Uh, wow, okay, so <laughs> to draw an extra card, they burn a power tablet that they absolutely do not need. That makes no sense. Yet Mew is so powerful that you can't even punish those horrible plays. Ugh. Seriously, players treat Mew and treat Genesect as if they're trying to draw as many cards as they can every single turn, but it's really weird because my opponent chose not to use Genesect at one point, so I don't know. I really don't understand um, a lot of the plays, and it, it does get really frustrating, I would say, um, sometimes to see to see those sort of plays because they're generally like they're wrong plays you know and players are just never punished for them or they don't seem to be punished for them often enough because of how the format is and that's frustrating right you know that it's a wrong decision but it doesn't even matter because of your slow start or just overall i don't know and then we got a well played which I also do not understand. So I think I just grab the Marnie here. And we'll go Trinity Nova, we'll power up the bench, um, which is another issue in and of itself. If my opponent knocks out the bench Darkies, then we are in a lot of trouble. In getting well played, so I don't understand um, why I've been saying that. Maybe we'll just attach the energy and that's that. What attack did they use? Yep, there's the energy. <laughs> yeah, all right. So nothing you can do against that sort of start with my start and then anyways. All right, on to the next game. After a pretty frustrating first game against our cocky opponent too. That sends preemptive well played and spams well played preemptively. So very disappointing to, to play against Players who make bad decisions and they get cocky. <laughs> it's like, whatever. All right. So we do get to go first. Pitsy Joe not cooperating today, it seems. This is the third video I'm recording today and not the best hands <laughs> so far, but oh well. So we rely on top decks here. Okay, that is a top deck that we need. 
so not much to say here um, my options are grab bucket to guarantee the attachment grab marty and hope for an attachment because i have the scoop of net i think i'm gonna grab the bucket i think that makes sense i grab the bucket attach the energy evolve knock out the active and then all that and before i attack i scoop up net the sobble so that next turn i can go drizzle for the melanie and have the um the other attack right um although well never mind <laughs> Never mind. I still think it's important to plan, right? You can always end up getting more need, but it is important to plan. And so imagine if this Ultra Ball was either an incense or a level ball, then um, the discard here wouldn't be so harsh, right? Uh, the choice build could actually end up mattering. But I do play extra copies of it, so I think I'm just going to Ultra Ball away these two. And we're going to establish the VMAX. And this time around, I'm going to choose to go for the research with the drizzle, hoping to find a water or a bucket along with other resources. Because if I just find the bucket here, then I'm actually putting myself in not such a great spot. I do only have four energies and two buckets, so there's a chance I just whiff here. I can attach the double turbo energy to actually get an attack off. <laughs> Which is what, what I'll end up getting, I guess. Um, okay. <laughs> so I'll use Ride of the High King. I mean, we got the knockout, right? So I guess that's the best we can hope for. And we can continually attack. So it's not the end of the world that we didn't get the water. We got to attack. That's what's important. And now we have access to Arceus V Stars B B Birth. We have bonus damage with Intellion. We have um, Drizzle to search for whatever we might need. Uh, which okay, it's fine. And G Max Spiral for 140 damage. So this deck really wants choice built. I don't know why people are not playing the Path to a Peak version of the deck though. Um, okay, can I get a KO here? I think I can, actually. With the V-Star, I think I, I can actually one-shot this Antillion VMAX. So I will. I need a Water Energy, the Leon, the Choice Build, and I have the Quick Shoot, right? Uh, water, Leon... Oh yeah, just Water and Leon, so I actually have an extra card I can search for off of the Drizzle. Um, or I can just keep the Drizzle as it is. So sure, let's go for it, right? Let's be fancy. So bucket plus Leon. So my opponent actually playing the fan of waves ends up um, helping us in a way, as it allows me to do this cute play. So I'll do quick shooting. I'll play Leon. I'll play the choice belt, and I'll go ahead and max lens for 310 damage and the one shot. Very nice. So I guess, hmm, now that I'm thinking about it. No, because I can't Melanie and Leon at the same time. So I guess technically going boss on that guy could have been better, but then next turn I can't Leon plus Melanie. So I don't think it matters anyways. Probably doesn't end up mattering. Now I have wind with boss boss. But I have nothing powered up, and my opponent just concedes, so simple enough. Alright, so quick loss, quick win. <laughs> so hopefully this third game can be a little more interesting than the ones we've had so far. It was nice to see the combo actually end up working, and it led to a concession, right? So that's never a bad thing. Never ever a bad thing. Alright, so we did Mulligan twice. We do have Marnie, at least, to help us. So that's not bad at all. Our hand is decent, for sure. Um, are we up against Mew v Max? No, we're up against um, that, whatever that is. So I'm not going to bother benching that guy. I'm just going to go ahead and attach Path. That could lead to like a foul sense of security for my opponent. Which is not 
like bad, right? And it's not like Marnie gives me such great odds of setting up the VMAX and a lot of backup stuff to get a KO, so we'll see. I will commit though. I will commit the energy and I will commit the choice build to the active. Maybe I'll save the choice build actually to the bench for the bench. Okay, so my bird gets rid of the Urshifu, which is actually really good because they might not know, well, they clearly don't know that I have Arceus V-Star right here. Um, that guy is a little scary for sure, but now I can um, establish Sobble and sure, I'll bench you, I'll attach you, I will do this and I will Marty. Incense or Ultra Wall or the VMAX. Not quite. And I'm dead drawing now. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Alright, so I'm gonna play the bucket. <laughs> Unreal. Well, Pierce for 70. Not the best. Not the best at all. My only decks do feel very fragile, I guess. Alright, there's Crobat for four. I really hope I get Martin. There's the VMAX. Which is really scary. Please just Marty me. I didn't bench the Arceus on purpose, even though it takes away two potential outs, uh, being the Arceus V-Star. Um, because I didn't want to have three Pokemon, because then um, Fear and Panic would KO my Calyrex with um, like a choice build or something, which you assume they must play, right? Like they have got to play choice build here. All right, so we see Houndoom. I mean, not getting KO'd here is actually pretty okay. And there's the Fear and Panic. So please give me a good top deck. <sighs> uh. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Um, yeah. Glacial Lens. So, a choice built top deck now lets me knock out the Gengar. With the Ice Rider. But we're not really getting anywhere. Just my own Marnie. <laughs> Why? My own stupid Marnies. I need to play a deck that doesn't play Marnie at regionals. <laughs> I need to play a deck that doesn't play Marnie. That way at least, like, if I get Marnied, it's on my opponent. It's not my own undoing. <laughs> Alright, so my opponent really thinking through what he wants to do, let's go, thank you opponent, you are magnificent. I mean, now it's very likely I'll whiff energy, because now they're at the bottom, and I have no more buckets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I mean, I might end up having to go search for them with the Arceus V-Star. But, okay, that Marnie actually gives me hope. As long as I don't draw horribly off of this. So now the plan is get the V-Star powered up, knock out the Gengar VMAX through that, and then hopefully the Ice Rider VMAX can get a KO with the choice build. All right, so we have a game. Thanks to my opponent's Marty. It seems like I was going to draw one of these two, though. 
Um, should I thin first? Yes, I need to increase the chances that I find a drizzle, a V star, an incense, or an ultra ball as much as I can. So let's go, Melanie. Okay. <laughs> sure. <sighs> Not even a level ball or a drizzle, dude. So many outs. So many freaking outs. Not even my prizes are good. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, I mean, yeah, the best case scenario is my opponent evolves into the Gengar VMAX and uses Houndoom to power it up and then... Oh wait, no, I can't. No, never mind. Even with double Houndoom. Ugh. Okay, so what would have been the... Yeah, it would have made a difference, right? With the V-Star, I could have gotten the Calyrex powered up. And then I could have done the Leon Plus Choice Belt search. Does this help me in any way? They got the double hand room, so they are getting the knockout. 310. Yeah, now they need switch. That's all they need. That is all they need, a switch. Because my maximum damage output is 280 because if or if I had been able to evolve into a drizzle, then quick shooting plus choice belt plus right hand probably would have gotten me there. So <laughs> everything that could go wrong went wrong that turn. Very sad. Very, very sad. <laughs> Okay, I mean, they do have three energies. And they only need a switch, though. Switch plus an ability, which obviously they can do. Oh, so frustrating, man. It's so frustrating. Dead draw, two turns, still in it. Need any level ball, any drizzle, any incense, any ultra ball, any V star. Nope. <laughs> Just nope. Not gonna happen, Pablo. Forget about it, dude. <sighs> I mean, now it's just grab energy and then I need boss, right? That's all it takes. If they have to win, they have to win. If not, then I just win. 280 is not good. Oh, you know what? Actually, okay, so I gave up too soon. Absolutely gave up too soon. Um, 280 meant um, they can't use Houndoom's ability onto the Gengar because then they self KO, so they would have actually had to find the energy. Oh, okay. So it seems like it's priced. So then I guess we win. So I have a scoop up net left and I have my switch. Yeah, so even if they trap the sobble so I can retreat, I can either evolve or whatever. So yeah, no, okay, now I win. <laughs> what a game. <laughs> what a game. That's unfortunate that my opponent's um, single strike energy is in their prize cards, that's unfortunate. I could have prevented that uh, being an option by doing 280 though. Absolutely could have prevented that from happening. So that's on me. That is completely on me, a mistake on my part. If I had done that, then my opponent would not have been able to um, 
to have that possibility, right? To say, oh, I'm unlucky that it's priced because they wouldn't even have been able to search for it. They would have had to draw into it, which still would have been unlucky since they didn't have it clearly, but their chances of drawing it would have been so much lower off of, um, off of the, um, the research than just searching for it, right? So yeah, GG. I have no idea how I won this. <laughs> I actually have no idea how I won this after that start, but hey. Deck Melanie feels not so great. Uh, my draws feel not so great. Ultra Volts feel also very questionable, so I don't know. I don't know how else I could tweak this deck, though. So maybe maybe the, I don't need Path to the Peak. Maybe another stadium could be better. Uh, because the Path to the Peak does stop my Arcade V-Star ability, which I seem to rely on a lot. So I don't know. This is like as standard as you get, though. And yeah, the game of standard is whoever whiffs ends up losing, right? I whiffed majorly, my opponent was one card away, but they whiffed their prize card. So yeah, um, I will be testing this deck more, but I also want to showcase other decks. So be on the lookout for um, other decks as we continue to cover Brilliant Stars.